God, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Amen. We are in the beloved. Joint heirs with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Amen. It is a great privilege to come back and share the word of God with you again. We're talking about the mystery of the fellowship, having a fellowship with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We're here dealing with Paul, the apostle, uh, Saul, whose name became Paul, to where that we are finding out that this mystery that Paul is talking about through the gospel, where that the Jews and the Gentiles are fellow heirs through the body of Christ. They have become one. We have become one with God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he testifies about it and through the grace of God, understanding it is the grace of God that has revealed this to him, that he has, he, he sold out. He said he was sold out to this. He's given his life to this. He laid down his life for this, that the Gentiles would come to know the true and living God, understanding this that he is saying in his letters, that uh, he was called to this. He, his, his life was 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 was, was prepared, prepared for this, and so that's what he did. And he talks about he didn't want to go into other places where where the other apostles had laid their foundation. He said he want to go where a foundation is not laid, because he want to be free and frequently to to deliver what God had given him, because he said it's a mystery. He said it was hidden uh, from ages that. In Christ, that in the body of Christ, that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting our sins against us, but also he included the Gentiles that they would come to know this truth because it is the grace of God that is causing us to understand our acceptance in the beloved, that we are loved and been loved from the beginning. Amen. So I want you to go with me real quickly to Ephesians chapter 3. And let's look at verse number one, because we're taking this journey to, you know, to where Paul is explaining through his letters in the, in the churches to where that he was defending this, uh, uh, this fellowship uh, through the grace of God that the Gentiles have. And we see on the other hand how the opposition of some of the Jews did not receive that that way. They did not receive that revelation, understand it that way at this time. You know, so, but he begins to uh, say some things to the Gentiles and through his letters. Let's listen to this. In verse number one, uh, Ephesians one, excuse me, Ephesians chapter three, looking at verse number one. He says, for this reason, I, Paul, he says, for this reason, I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus for you Gentiles. My, 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 my. He said, I'm a prisoner for you Gentiles. Through Christ Jesus, he says, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which was given to me for you, it was given to me for you. Paul says, this grace was given to me for you. Wow. I want to say right here that, see, the grace that was given to Paul, even the grace Jesus himself came full of grace and truth. Jesus, the Christ our Lord, our Savior. He was grace to do exactly what he came to do. God was grace on him to heal through the miracles, the signs, and he also was grace to take the suffering. He was grace to lay down his life. He was grace to take the ridicule, the punishment for me and you. He was grace to be a substitute lamb. He was grace to be all that that God raised him up from the dead and seated him on the right hand of him. He was grace for all of that. Amen. So Paul saying that he was grace to carry this message of our Lord and Savior that he would go to the Gentiles and he would reveal what God had given to him. Amen. So he says, uh, amen, dispensation of grace, which was given to me for you, how that by revelation, he made known to me, Paul is saying to him, the mystery, the mystery he made known to me, as I have briefly written already, by which when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Glory to God. He wants them to understand something because we know that the Jews and the Gentiles did not run together. They did not fellowship together. We understand that how the Jews looked down at Gentiles. You know, they were unclean. They were dogs. 
they were not of the, of the, of the, not of the house of God. They were not in the covenant of Abraham. So, you know, that's how they looked at them. And so he says that, but this mystery, he says, he says, which is which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it has now been revealed by the Spirit. It has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets. So it's been revealed. This mystery that was hidden has been revealed. Well, what is it, Paul, that has been revealed? It was through the holy apostles and the prophets that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. It has been revealed to the apostles and the prophets that the Gentile should be what? Fellow heirs. And this is where we know the opposition came upon Paul and whoever else decided to say the Gentiles ought to be fellow heirs of, of, of the grace of God, be fellow heirs of, of Moses and Abraham and so on, of patriarchs. You know, wait, what are you talking about? We, 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 but we know the experience through the word of God of how Peter and Paul had their experience understanding that the Gentiles are not to be denied. Because it is God's doing. It is God's work that bringing them in. But it's through the gospel. And so he says, of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. So the gospel, the gospel, the gospel. This is what Paul is calling the gospel. He said, this is the gospel I preach. The gospel that Paul is preaching is where that the Jews and Gentiles Oh my God, listen to me now. That the Jews and Gentiles are fellow heirs of one body. This is the gospel that Paul is preaching. That the Jews and Gentiles are fellow heirs of one body. He says, that's the gospel that I preach. Now, 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 now. They can come and get me if they want to because that's what they did. <laughs> he suffered many things because he is saying, this is the gospel that he preached, that the Jews and Gentiles are fellow heirs of one body, the body of Christ. This is the fellowship, this is the mystery that God had hidden ages ago, that through the body of Christ, Jews and Gentiles alike will be fellow heirs to the throne of God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. And so now they're sharing in the promises of Abraham. They're sharing in all the spiritual promises that God has promised to Abraham, the Gentiles. Now, we talk about to those who believe. Now, if you don't believe, I'm not speaking to you, but those who have believed, we're, we're seeing this unfold through the Apostle Paul as he is delivering these letters, you know, and in and, and person, and how also the, the signs and wonders that follow Paul, that they would understand that, wait a minute, wait a minute, you know, Paul, Paul, this power is flowing through him. People are being healed. People are being set free. The spirit is, 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 is responding. So what is it that, that we, uh, we, you're going to say that he's not an apostle that, or that he's not from God? Paul is, I, I, I like how Paul stands on his firm foundation about the call that he has on his life. And he don't care what, uh, whether you, uh, who, who you are that will cause him to turn around or to lose heart on what God has given him. He has laid down his life for it. But listen to this. So he says, uh, partakers of his promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel, of which I became a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God, given to me by the effective working of his power. It is of his power. Now, we talked about a little bit about our fellowship last time we met. Of fellowship and what this fellowship means and where we're going with this fellowship. Because we talked about in our days and day about a fellowship in churches and different things, and that we don't get it confused about being the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, uh, the Son, and the Father. We don't get it confused about where our fellowship lies uh, as with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We don't get it confused about our spiritual fellowship, but now our earthly fellowship with one another. With one another. We have an earthly fellowship. How can you say you love God who you have not seen and see your brother every day and you have a problem? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You can't have a fellowship with God that's in love 
that, that you received God through the love of Christ and you have come to know him, your salvation, your, your born again experience and your life in the spirit and not love your brother who is in the fellowship with you. See, wait a minute. You, you know, you're, 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 you're not in the fellowship. You, you, you're, you're far from the fellowship. You're not accepting your brother who's in the fellowship. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? So, so we know that our fellowship with one another is very important. It's very vital to our faith. It's, it's very important how we fellowship with one another. Because Paul even says a place, he says, uh, not Greek, Jew, Gentile, bond or free. We're all one in the body of Christ. I remember growing up and uh, going to church. I remember getting saved, at, you know, and, and I, I'm feeling all this, this, this love of God. I'm, I'm feeling just so much love, you know. And I'm not understanding uh, what was going on in the church at the time. And so I can walk in any building, any church that proclaims the name of Jesus, you know. And uh, my spirit would just open, you know, to receive uh, of the fellowship of the brothers and sisters. Because the love that, I, that, that, that affected my life, my arms were open wide to receive, I don't care what uh, nationality you were, but the love that was in me was ready to receive my brothers and sisters in Christ because of what I experienced and what I have come to understand and growing in his love. But I find out, and, and, and still is going on today, that everybody's not feeling like you feel it. Everybody's not feeling this acceptance according to the love that we, not that we are also have come to read about, but we have come to experience and through the Holy Spirit that God loves us, and that love is to be given to one another, accepting one another, sharing with one another. Paul begins to write letters, and, and he begins again to commend those uh, 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 churches of how, about their faith and about their love. We, 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 we won't get in there as we go on this journey, but I want to say this. He began to commend these churches on how, about their faith, and he commends them according to how they are loving and sharing their wealth and their uh, gifts with one another. How they are sharing their love and their wealth with one another, especially to those who are in need. He said, your faith has gone on before. Your, your faith has gone before you. People have heard of your faith through what? Through your works of love. Through your love, people have heard of your faith. It's because of your love people have heard of your faith. Should not the body of Christ, should not the world know about our faith according to our love? Not according to our traditions, not according to all the things we do and don't do, not according to our buildings, how we dress, how we look, not according to our nationalities. No, it's according to our love. He says they will know you by the way you love one another. Our fellowship is a fellowship that's built, a foundation that is on love. If we are heirs of the kingdom, if we are in this body, this is a body of love. Love that overflows. It's so much love that you, 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 we ought to be like, we ought, you know, wait a minute, it's so much love that's going on in the body of Christ. We are taking the lead. Let the nation see the love that we have for one another. Let our light of love shine so bright that the world would wonder about the love that we have for each other. Let our love be a sign to every nation, every creed, every whatever <laughs> you want to call it. But let our love testify about the fellowship that we have in God. Amen. Oh, glory to God. One, one more scripture. One more scripture. Let's look at this here. Uh, Ephesians. Ephesians 1. I want to go to Ephesians 1 real quick. Uh, because we're going to get back to this. Ephesians 1 and 7. It says this here. In him 
we have redemption. Now, 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 now Paul is saying this. Now, now, he's speaking to the Gentiles. Speaking to us. Whoever's listening. He says, in him, talking about Christ, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. According to the riches of his grace. According to the riches of his grace, we have the forgiveness of sins. In him, we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. So the blood paid the redemption. The blood paid the debt. The blood redeemed us. It was sufficient to pay the debt. So we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness. So the blood pays the debt that we have forgiveness of sins according to his riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the time, he might gather together in, in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, be, being predestined according to the purpose of him who, walk, who, who works in all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. It was God's work. See, the Gentiles are hearing this, what I just read, that you've been redeemed. Redeemed from the power of sin and death. The Gentiles are hearing about a Savior, how God had loved them through the death of Christ. That he purposed to give them a life through the resurrection. Of Christ. The Gentiles are hearing that your sins have been forgiven over 2,000 years ago. Gentiles are hearing that God no longer counted sins against you. The Gentiles are hearing the love of God through the grace that was given through Christ that we are able to come to him and receive a life and a walk in a fellowship with God. That's what the Gentiles are hearing. Our fellowship is with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And our fellowship is with one another. There's only one race, and it's the human race. Oh, glory to God. We've been bought with one blood, and that one blood comes from above. And we can fellowship in Christ, in the body of Christ. Amen. Glory to God. The mystery of the fellowship. Guess what? It included me and you that we walk in the fellowship that we would love one another. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for letting me stop by and share this moment with you. Hey, keep us in your prayers and we're not done with this. I'll see you on the other side.